You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. You've had a long day at work, and you can't wait to just get home, take off your shoes, plop yourself down in your favorite chair, and relax. Ah. You walk up to your tranquil residential home and your neatly manicured lawn in your quiet suburban neighborhood, put the key in the lock, open the door, and... Yes, the pets have gone wild! What were you thinking? Welcome to the show about everything you always wanted to know about exotic pets. Where to get them, what to feed them, and how to care for them. You'll even find out why some people live with a monkey. Now, here's your host, exotic pet expert and author, Bob Tart. Hey, Bob, what were you thinking? I'm Bob Tart, author of Enslaved by Ducks, Fall Weather, and the brand new book, Kitty Cornered. And I am here at Salt Lake Bog with my wife, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi. Why don't you say uh, what we're seeing right now at Salt Lake Bog? Well, just as we approach the Overlook deck here at the Bog, where we haven't been for a couple, three years, a couple years at least, Bob remarked about something he saw out beyond the pond in the Bog. He said, oh my gosh, or something like that. It's a huge group of sandhill cranes. They're all milling around and headed towards something out there. There's just a big group of them. He thinks there's around 17. Yeah, I mean, that's huge for us. It's not like migration time when people see 3,000. But um. I mean, we usually, when we had come back here a couple, three years ago, we were lucky if we saw maybe, what, two to five or if or any. Oh, yeah. This is a huge group. Yeah. It must be some babies. Yep. You know, adolescents. Something like that. They're not, like, tiny, but they're not as huge as an adult, so... It just might be this huge group of, like, adolescents. It's just a beautiful sight. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we thought it'd be fun to do our podcast from a remote location and get away from our own birds for a while. And uh, you might be able to hear some birds in the background. It's a little bit hot. If we get hot, we'll walk down the stairs where it's a little Now, what's your definition of a bog for anybody that doesn't know what a bog is? A bog is there's a floating mass of, I think, sphagnum moss and um, some other vegetation, and it's actually floating on water. So even though, as we look out over this, it looks kind of like a field mixed mm-hmm. with cattails. If you were to try to walk on that, it would be mushy? I think some people, you know, there's a lot less water this year. Look how small the water yes, is. Yes, there is a pond-looking part that has lily pads right. way out, and beyond that is the cranes. Yeah, oh, I just heard a cat bird. And so the I think some of the birds are further from us than usual because of that, but... You see all the cattails and everything. I'm here in the hawk. That's in the foreground, and then there's a field-looking part, and beyond that is the pond-looking part with a bunch of lily pads, but the water's so low. We had such a hot, dry summer, the water is way low. Yeah, we've had um, temperatures uh, over... 90 and above, the most, almost the most we ever had in July, depending on... Well, we had at least one day that was 104. No, 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 104, 104. Yep. Without the heat index. Without even. the heat index. We had in West almost Michigan. the most 90 degree, above 90 degree days we ever had in Michigan, depending on. Of course, this last three or four days hasn't been like over and above 90, but it was one of our hottest Julys ever and driest, like hardly any rain. Yeah. Most of the month. So we got a couple of uh, topics we're going to discuss. Oh, those cranes are still out there. Yeah, they're just standing there wondering what we're doing here. Yeah, they're not too close. They're, what, about a football field away? At least. Would yeah, something like that, something about like a football that. field. Yeah. So uh, we got a couple topics we're going to talk about. And as I say, if we get too hot, we'll walk down the stairs. Yeah, we're in the bright sun. Yeah, it's pretty hot. You want to walk down a little bit? Yeah. We, we'll walk back up in a minute and take a look. About 10 steps, we'll just walk down the yeah. steps. So anyway, uh, a couple things I wanted to talk about uh, before we get going. First of all, um, to apologize for the uh, last 10 minutes of uh, my last podcast, which is the biggest week in birding, part two. I should apologize for the entire podcast, but I'm apologizing because of the sound quality. Because what happened was um, this recorder has an automatic clipping on it. So if sounds are too loud, it actually cuts the sound off. And we recorded, Bill and I recorded the last 10 minutes in his Volvo and there was some low frequency sound in the car, like the rumbling of the car or something. And even though we didn't hear it and it didn't seem loud, it kept clipping the sound. So there was a lot of um, interruptions to the sound from the last one. That's probably all for the best. Ha! <laughs> Here's something flying over. Big plane. Yeah, big airplane. Anyway, other thing I want to mention is something new I'm doing on Twitter. So if any of you folks are uh, on Twitter, you might join me. And that is every Friday... I'm doing a feature called... Boy, that's a loud airplane. Yeah, it is. 
I hope they're not going to strafe us. Or something. <laughs> it's a feature called Ask Six Cats. And what happens is every week, one of the six cats from Kitty Cornered will answer questions from other kitties or from humans too. So if your cat has a question about living with you, and of course your cat would, on Friday you just tweet it to, uh, you can follow me at uh, Bob Tart, all one word, Bob Tart. And the name of the show is Ask Six Cats, 12.30 to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And it's got a hashtag so you can find it. It's Ask Six Cats. So that's that hashtag sign, all one word, Ask Six Cats, and the number six. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And in between questions, the cats have just a lot to say about their living situation. And this week, of course, it'll be too late when you hear this. But just to give you an example, this week our... Uh, Big, fat, lazy cat Maynard is going to get some tips for busy people and busy cats on how to relax. And if anyone knows how to relax. It's Maynard. It's Maynard, yeah. So um, we got a few So every topics. week when I come home from the chiropractor at 12.30 or right around there, I have to be quiet for half an hour because he's doing his tweets. On Fridays. On Fridays. Yeah, just on Fridays. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things we wanted to talk about is something that happened to Linda. It's quite a while ago now. But remember, uh, Linda and I talked to you uh and our last podcast is probably, before the um, ones I did with Bill, it's probably three months ago now. And that's when we just had our new pen built. And we were talking about how wonderful the new pen was. But you had a little mishap. Yeah, and I could have sworn I told the son. He's shaking his head no. I could have sworn I told everybody about this. But just in case I did, nope. it doesn't hurt anything. I'll tell it again. I was out there one day doing my chores like I always do. And I was letting them out into their outdoor pen. And these I, are the ducks. the ducks, the geese, and the one chicken that's left after all the mink attacks and everything. And and this is a brand new, we'll just refer- brand new, beautiful pen and it's mink proof pen. Mink proof. It's got hard, all made with hardware cloth and everything. And I went in there and I. What we do is we change the pool water and make sure there's food in there for the day and change the water in the bucket, everything like that. I had done that and I was headed out to go back into the barn. And I noticed the door didn't open, and I give it a good shove, and it didn't open, and I give it a good shove, and I realized I was locked in that pen. Well, it's a big pen. It's about 11 by 14 or 11 oh, by 12 and it's something big. like that. It's pretty good size, but the fact was I was stuck in there. This is about a quarter after 9 in the morning with nobody around. I didn't have a cell phone on me, anything. There I was just stuck in that pen. So I got a stick, and I tried to get that bolt assembly up and slide over. Fortunately, it was not long enough to do that. So my heart was be I'm kind of claustrophobic, and even though that wasn't a real small in- space, it still, it gives you a creepy feeling to know that you are not going to get out of some area. And let's mention this is not a pen that you can stick your hand through the wire, because we've got hardware cloth. The whole fencing is hardware cloth, and it's so tight that like half-inch squares. It's so tight that if a little butterfly gets in, like we've had commas and um, question, marks. question marks get in there, They're stuck. they can't get out. No, so you, you, you're stuck. you cannot stick your hand through or even a finger through to work no, a latch. No, so, but there's places where it was laced with wire on the lower panels, and I thought, well, I'll just unlace one of the lower panels, and I did that. I took the wire out of one whole section. Fortunately, I was too big to wiggle my way through there. Well, hardly anyone could fit through there. It's very tight. This is where there's overlapping hardware cloth where we're stitching one piece of hardware cloth where right. the new piece starts. Right, and it just, I'm not huge, but I mean, I just could not get through there. Well, I'm skinny as a rail and I couldn't get through no, there. No, neither one of us, an adult, could not get through that. So that was kind of, then my heart was beating hard about that. I was just very upset about the whole thing. So I thought, we're about, what, two football fields away from the neighbor that's mm-hmm. back in the wood? And I know the back bedroom of that house faces the swamp. And I thought maybe if I scream, I have a very loud voice. I thought if I screamed loud enough for long enough, he would hear me. It's around the time of day I think he'd be getting It's our up. neighbor, Patrick. Yeah, that lives back in the woods on the river. So I started screaming at the top of my lungs, Pat, Patrick, I help. I'm stuck in here. Pat, Pat, Pat. Honestly, I did that off and on for two solid hours. It yeah, you were in two hours stuck in that, <laughs> and you didn't have your cell phone, so you nothing, couldn't call me at work. Nothing, and I was even so desperate. I mean, I literally ended up with almost laryngitis by the end of the time. I was so desperate. The cars, well, how far would that be from the road? You could Not see the road. Far from the road, 50 feet from the road or less. 50 feet from the road, but it's partly, I mean, I could see the road, and if anybody was looking my way, they could see me. 
but they weren't really looking my way. So I'm waving my arms like crazy, screaming towards the road. No to, one could see you wave your pa- arms. but I, They could. Actually, they if they were looking that way, they could. But I thought maybe a passerby would hear that voice. But if they did, it was just like one of the Marge, do you hear something? No, I don't know, honey, you're just hearing Yeah, because people again. are going by a 55. Yeah, but I thought they might hear it, but nothing. There's And, of course, the ducks and geese and the chicken are afraid of me at this point. They're just, like, huddling over in the corner, like, get away as you fire. Yeah, we knew these her. people were crazy, but they didn't know they were this crazy. <laughs> Let's talk about the latch a little bit first. That latch, is this, it shouldn't have done, he promised me that was. That, this is not the kind of latch that automatically closes no, when the door closes. No. This is a sliding bolt. And I tried duplicating getting locked inside with a sliding bolt. And there had to be an extreme set of circumstances where the bolt was balanced just right on, on a certain part of, of it. And the door was slammed just right. And, and it, it engages down. the second half of the lock. The sliding bolt engages the you know the latch it locks into. Like maybe a quarter of an inch at most. It, so. It's just a one in a million thing Only that would to happen to me. So what did so you do? So then finally, you know, and nothing would poke across. Finally, what happened was after, oh gosh, that had to be almost two hours. Well, there's an umbrella in there, an old umbrella that we shade them with, that I was able to tear off us one of the spines or whatever you call them. And I tried that, you know, like a half an hour before and I couldn't break it. I found a one that was rusted enough. So it was probably 12, 14 inches long. With that, I was able to slide the bolt across, even though it had this what would you call it, humpy thing in the middle, and I was able to lift it up and slide it across. So this is kind of like Mission Impossible, where they <laughs> they improvise things out of what's at hand. Yeah, so. I had no, you know, the sticks didn't work. I was getting so antsy in there. There's little rocks all over that whole thing. I was taking, just to keep from going crazy, I was taking my boot and scraping rocks across the pen and putting them in a pile. In fact, some of them are still laying there. Just to have something to do. I was just very nervous about being in that pen. So... I really, I can't tell you how grateful I was to get out of there. I thought it was just like one of the worst things that ever happened to me. Yeah, that sounds terrible. And so when I came home, I moved the, um, actually, I couldn't move the bolt because we found out the uh, guy screwed, and was, he did a good job. The guy who made the pen, he screwed it into the boards with these uh, screws that were about an inch and a half long. So, and I couldn't budge them. So we had to wait for, let, let's take a little walk a little bit because uh, Linda can't place. stand in one place. We'll go into the sun again. So we waited until uh, one of our helpers came by and we moved the bolt, the latch part of the bolt that it catches on to. And so now it would it hasn't be... hasn't happened since then. It would be awfully darned. I think it's impossible now, but we're not going to ever say don't impossible. Say that. So, but um, I am extremely to this day, and that was what? How long ago was that? I'm still nervous about that. Every time I walk in that pen, I put a, a lot of times I put a, a like a broom laying down in there just to make sure. Yeah, I always kind of check it out too now. I um, just, silly, just make sure that it's flat. The bolt is laying down yeah. flat so that it. Um, yeah, won't when you do have something again. like that happen, you never forget it. Yeah. You never forget it. Yeah. Oh, there's those cranes still back there. They're just standing still. Well, a couple of them are moving around. Yeah, not moving much. They're. But this is a thrill to see that many of them together. And they all look kind of young. Yep, here in Kildeers. So uh, we're about at the midpoint of our show. So uh, you are listening to What Were You Thinking? I'm going to remind you to visit my website. It's just bobtart.com, B-O-B-T-A-R-T-E.com. And you can read the first chapter of my new book, Kitty Cornered. The whole first chapter is right on there, plus lots of pictures of the cats. And Kitty Cornered is a very funny book about the craziness of living in a small house with six cats. And also you can read the first chapter of my other two books, Enslaved by Ducks and Fall Weather, and lots of pictures from that, too. So we will be right back after a word from our sponsor. What Were You Thinking? We'll be right back after Bob gets the ducks out of his living room. Don't go away. Petco, where the pets go. Petco, where the pets go. Pet Life Radio has tail wagging, fur flying, fabulous deals for our listeners from Petco. Get $6 off your order of $60 or more and up to 40% off the entire Petco site. That's right. But that's not all. Because you're a Pet Life Radio listener, you'll also get free shipping on your order of $49 or more. $6 off, up to 40% off, and free shipping from Pet Life Radio and Petco. To get these awesome deals, go to PetcoDeals.com. That's PetcoDeals.com. Petco, where the pets go. 
I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well-informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well-read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership Plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to audibledeals.com. That's audibledeals.com. Introducing the new Brett Michaels Pets Rock Collection, exclusively at PetSmart. I created it for the pets that rock your world. Shop the Brett Michaels Pets Rock Collection and celebrate PetSmart's 25th anniversary with up to 25% off thousands of items on the PetSmart site. Plus free shipping on orders of $49 or more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com. That's PetSmartDeal.com. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. Hi, I'm John Carlin, creator and host of FinCasters. I have two passions in life. One of them is broadcasting. The other one is aquariums. FinCasters is where they meet. My goal is to create a place where you can go for consistently awesome aquarium videos. In less than a year, we've done fin casts on everything from lionfish and sea urchin research in the Florida Keys to the keeping of discus and an examination of rare species like the freshwater garapanda. We even did a tank tour in a $16 million home. So welcome to FinCasters. Watch FinCasters on Pet Life Radio's Chomp Animal TV Network, C-H-O-M-M-M-P dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio dot com. Okay, ducks are in the pond, rabbits in his hutch, and monkeys... Ow! In my car! Oh, okay, well, I go check my insurance policy. We'll turn you back over to Bob. Okay, I'm hearing a hawk right now. Did you hear that? Uh, You're back with uh, What Were You Thinking? with Bob and Linda Tart. And uh, as you know, if you listen to the first part of this, and I don't think you can listen to the second part without listening to the first part, but we are standing on a little platform at uh, Saw Lake Bog, which is... It's 10 miles from our house. 10 miles from our not, house. Not that far. Yes, so, and we're in uh, Lowell, Michigan, so uh, very nice, very secluded spot. If you didn't know it was here, you would never be able to find it. Yeah, it's kind of hard And to find. Uh, it's, uh, for a long time... This is the only place we ever saw sandhill cranes. We've seen them since um, at the river by our house and at Roselle Park. But if this is really the... This is a thrill to see this many. Yep, and this is really the most reliable place I've ever been to. Yeah, to. I, this might be where they have their babies, don't you think? Oh, Maybe? I've heard that they nest here. Yeah. I, I have heard that. And the only reason we didn't come here for two or three years is because they kept the gate closed because some teenagers got in here one time and messed up a shed that's back by the... Well, kind of near where the walkway is. They're having parties here. Or something on Friday nights or whatever. So they got mad about that, and they closed the gate off, so you couldn't just come in and go. You could call somebody to come and unlock it or whatever. But we found out, when I called recently, they said, oh, no, we we quit doing that. I don't recall when, but we could have come here last year even. So if any teenagers are listening who want to uh, have a party at Salt Lake Bog, uh, the gate is still up. You can't go there. (laughs) We got a bunch of stuff to talk about, but we might have too much for one show, so um, we'll see. One thing, I'm going to sit down. Why that killdeer is noisy? Yeah. I want to talk about the um, little surprise we had on our riverbank, the big surprise we had on our riverbank. There's a heron. Seeing a great blue heron? Yeah, he's just bounce, bouncing around out there in the bog. He's near that big bushy thing there over to the right. He just oh, okay. you can't see him right this second. No, I don't have binoculars anyway with uh, yeah. right now because I'm... But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see him. him. He'll he'll come in view. Yeah. I'll be yeah. There. It's pretty quiet. This is end of July, just about August. Yeah, and, a lot of uh, the birds are quiet now. Yeah, they sure are because they're done nesting and done courting, done defending territory, and so they just aren't singing very much. Um, yeah, we're still hearing singing. indigo bunnings because they're still quite they're singing all the time. And I guess if you're anywhere where there are 
Red-Eyed Vireos, they're still uh, good singers, and we hear song sparrows still, and a few other birds. We were let's seeing birds down on our ri- on the Grand River behind our house. Yeah, let's go back in the shade for a minute again. So, anyway, we're going to talk about a little surprise, or the big surprise. We've had several surprises on the river, but I want to at least get to this one about an unwelcome surprise. You, you want to talk about that a little bit? What is it? The big unwelcome surprise that was at the river. What was it? It was, I'll give you a hint, it had barrels on it. Oh, <laughs> when was this? So we, we, go, we go for, um, Three weeks ago we go for walks all the time to... Um, down to the river, to Down to, to the birds. river, to see birds. I'm going to have a drink of water. We have a path that leads back there. Excuse me while I have a drink? Yeah, you, why, why don't you talk while I have a drink of water? Anyway, we were taking a walk. It's, it's kind of, I wouldn't call it a circular path, but the barn guy mows a path for us that goes there and around and it's kind of a square circle trapezoid or something and uh it goes down to the river down the river then it keeps going to this other site where we can see this little island that's down there anyway we're walking down there it's right runs parallel to the river part of the path does and there's this one great big tree and there's like a hill that goes down to where that tree is and it's right at the river's edge and uh were you that you noticed it first yeah i was shocked (laughs) there's this crummy looking little raft that looked like it was built by kids or teenagers or something it was just uh, junky pieces of wood with plastic barrels and it was kind of half broken apart it had the stick sticking up for a mast and they even had toilet paper on there on a roll it's just they thought of a lot of things to, in case they had to be yeah they must have had time. long journeys or yeah. something <laughs> but it was broken yeah, but it was... And it was stuck there. It, it was ugly. It was very unsightly. And there it was, stuck. Yeah, it was made from planks. It's probably, what, eight feet long. Yeah, something And it was like made that. from uh, 55-gallon plastic drums. Blue. And it looked like they were... Um, it almost looked like they were uh, duct taped to the thing, but they yeah, couldn't have been... I did see duct tape. They must have been wired, too, because, I mean, duct tape isn't just, waterproof, it's no, as yeah, far as I know. Yeah, that explain why it fell apart. And um, it had a stick, like, for a mast, although maybe they had a pirate flag or something, because there was graffiti on one of the planks, and they wrote... I don't know if you saw it, somebody painted or wrote on there, We drink and we pillage. Did you see <laughs> was that? Was it pillage? Yeah, we drink and we pillage. <laughs> So yeah. this thing was just so ugly. I mean, it yeah. really looked we like a wreck. To away, so he went out there and tried to push it away. Yeah, I figured. Well, it, it just. Back out. Yeah, I figured. Well, it's just on the bank a little bit, so I'll just give it a shove. It a so shove. I went out there and uh, I figured well, I'll just you know throw everything into and give it a shove. Well, my back moved, but the raft didn't. <laughs> Uh, it was uh, hung up on something. I don't know if there was an... I, at board. the time, I didn't know if there was an anchor or if it was stuck on a log or something, something. underwater. It and um, it would the not The water was go. way low during that time. Yeah, we had not... The, uh, let's talk about the kind of summer that we've had as far as the rain. The river is low, 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 low. I mean, we've, we've officially had a drought. It, yes. We had uh, almost no rain in June and in most of July. Right. And, and you could probably walk right across that river. It, maybe the middle part would be hard. But. Yeah, we saw some Canada geese last week before we had any rain, and they were walking way out in the river, and they were still walking. It was like their, up to their knees yeah, if they had not knees. Even that, yeah, yeah, and it, it was kind of shocking to see that. So anyway, the island was like this great big long peninsula. Normally, it would be half that length. Well, a lot of times there's it was like no a sandbar. A lot of times there's no little island, and this is the Grand River. There's no island at all because um, the water. Too flooded high. earlier but this then is these two islands connected to make one island and they're both like sandbars right so i figured to get rid of this raft i didn't know the legality either of doing this i wanted to um cut it in half and then at least the front part of it would float away and then maybe we could float the second part away but i kept wondering of the legality of it because if this thing washed up to us and then washed back into the river of its own accord Are we responsible that's not for that's it? not our responsibility if it does it of itself but if I cut this thing apart and shove it out into the river, and then it Maybe that's runs into someone's boat or something, right. am I littering? Am, am I the cause of it or what? That yeah, wasn't yours, but still. Yeah, I mean, once I start affecting it, you know, am I the you cause wonder. of it? Yeah. So anyway, we decided that we would have one of our barn helpers go and break it apart for us. Which he was going to do. He was going to do. But then we just had one rain, uh, and last uh, Sunday, a week ago... Practically every day we take a walk on the river, don't we? Except weekends yeah, when we go it's other places. Or something we don't. Otherwise, if your back is hurting, we can walk a little. I just walk. like to walk a little bit. Okay. So anyway, here we'll walk over here a little bit. So we went back on Monday, just taking our usual walk, and I said. 
good grief, Linda, look. You know, look beyond the tree, and the raft was gone. It was gone. Completely gone. Absolutely gone. And he couldn't even budge it. It was really stuck in there. Really, to be honest, the water had not risen that much. No. I don't know. Somebody came and got it. Yeah, that's what we don't know. We don't know if the water rose just enough. You know, there's a lot of wind for two or three days. Maybe it rocked it enough to where it rocked it loose. Mm Mm-hmm. So thank you, Lord, that it's gone. Right, but it's so it disappeared, so we're very happy. So we probably have time for one more little well, topic. I just want to say one thing about on the island, there was a bunch of crows and a young eagle. And the young eagle came down there. I don't know if the crows or the eagle was there first, but I think the eagle was there first. And then the crows that come up to our house that we feed all the time. These are how many crows? Well, six to eight crows. And I we believe that they are from the ones last year that used to fly around the woods. The mother was trying to get rid of them. Probably all of those had babies, or at least some of those stayed. So this is this group that thinks they live on our property and that we should feed them. Anyway, I saw them down there. The eagle landed, and then the crows landed and were feeding right beside him. The funny part is the crows eat, feed on our hill just beyond the fence, and there's a big fat woodchuck that feeds on the scratch feed too. The crows are afraid of that woodchuck. They won't get too close to him because who knows why they're afraid of him. He's not going to do anything to them. But they weren't afraid of the eagle, which could really do them harm. But they are afraid to get too close to this woodchuck. So go figure. so fat that he can hardly move. Right. They they keep their just like, oh, we better keep our distance. Well, and actually, they're even afraid of a squirrel. Because um, we put a bunch of Chipmunks. um, chipmunks. We put a bunch of scratch feed out on the hill. They don't dare get too close to where that woodchuck is, by the way, laying, eating. He doesn't even, he's too lazy to stand up and eat. Yep, and we're walking a little bit while we're talking. And in fact, so when the squirrel is there, they're too afraid to eat there when the squirrel is there. Yeah, no, yep. they're big babies. And yet they, they're not afraid of that uh, nope. eagle. Don't, no, I don't know nope. why. Should we also talk, we only got about five minutes left. Maybe we should talk about that very special bird that showed up, and then we'll save some of the other topics for next time. Oh, yeah. Because I think next week we could do another show with a couple other topics. So we were having breakfast on Friday. That was just two days ago. And I was just kind of sitting, and, ooh, poison ivy, watch out for that. Yep. So I'm all right. So, um... We were uh, outside. We were were looking outside. We were eating breakfast. I was looking out the window, and there on the suet feeder, usually we will see on the suet feeder one of several woodpeckers. Once in a great while, a red-winged blackbird. But there was a prothonotary warbler. Bigger than life. Now, this is an extremely uncommon bird in Michigan, period. We've seen one once, once before down on the, in near Michigan the river. on the river, but this is not a backyard bird. No, this is not, not a feeder bird. They're not this a feeder is bird. the kind of bird that, if it's at a reliable location, people will at least drive 20, 30, 40 miles to see it, right? Maybe yeah. even more. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, this is a the bright yellow with kind of a dark charcoal gray wing. Yeah, beautiful. A beautiful, beautiful little, thing. tiny little thing. So, you know, it's just a shock to see it right there. It's just sitting right there. Um, Sat there quite a long time. Yep, and then it flew. It didn't, Did it eat, didn't eat. No, okay. it looked at the suet cake. It didn't eat it. And then it flew to over. the wire. It sat on that wire. sat on the wire above our seed feeder for a little while. And I ran upstairs to get my camera because I figured no one would ever believe that we saw it. Of course, it was gone by that time. By the time I came. But you said but after, after I went to work. But after we left our work, it was, there's a shepherd's hook thing. It was sat up on that for about, oh, at least 60 seconds. So go figure. Yep. Yeah, yep. just a beautiful little bird. Yeah, just so, a gift from God. It was beautiful. Yep, and um, we'll we'll talk later. Do another podcast about what else we saw the same day. But we're about the and we'll talk about our baby we'll talk, birds. Yeah, next yeah time we'll talk too. about doing baby birds this summer and uh, yeah, all the birds, we've had, other birds we've been seeing. Yeah, we've had a lot of adventures. And if we think of any stories about our uh, dogs and cats or dogs, we don't have any dogs. See, I'm just I'm distracted <laughs> by this beautiful place where we yeah, are. Yeah, it's pretty. The Queen Anne's lace is coming out all over the place. One nice thing about all this heat this summer, we've had, you know, our big problem is mosquitoes in the summertime living in a swamp. Hey, this year we have not hardly had mosquitoes. Right. So uh, maybe we'll talk about the dogs that we don't so have the next, every cloud. Uh, next time. Yeah, there you go. And reminding you to uh, check in Fridays on Twitter, if you are on Twitter, to hash sign ask 6 cats ask number 6 cats 12.30 to 1 p.m. Fridays Eastern Time, and you can ask a question of whichever cat is in charge that week check out my website bobtart.com look for me at facebook email me at bob 
at PetLifeRadio.com. Just say hi. Say hi to Linda, too. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for stopping by. And thanks to our producer, Mark Winter, our long-suffering producer. So bye, Mark, and bye to you. Bye. Thinking about buying a monkey? How about a ferret or a skunk? Then check out the show that will answer the burning questions, where do you get them? What do you feed them? How do you take care of them? And most of all, what were you thinking? With exotic pet expert and author Bob Tart, every week on demand from PetLifeRadio.com.